Hello. Today I want to talk to you about painting on a small scale with large brushes. Uh, the benefit of doing this, it's a really good exercise to try, um, is that the large brushes stop you fiddling around. You have to be quite decisive about the tones um, and the broader areas of tonal value as you paint. Um, it's important that you, my dog, it's important that you squint uh, as you look at your subject, um, which helps you to simplify all the detail away uh, so that you're left with larger areas of um, tone, light and dark. And I'm going to simplify the palette as well and I'm just using three primary colours, cadmium yellow, alizarin red and French ultramarine blue uh, with titanium white. So I'm going to mix all the colours from that. I'm going to also do this all in one sitting, partly because it's almost the dog's tea time, um, but also because working quickly makes you decisive and makes you get on with it um, and that brings confidence to your work. It's a good way to work um, and it's a really good exercise to try and there are lots of artists who do this all the time. Um, it's a good practice. Okay, I'm going to show you my setup in a minute and then I'll go to a real-time recording of me uh, painting this little still life setup that I've got here. Thank you. So this is my workspace. I've got a desk here with a big skylight above it and all the light is coming down from above. I've closed the curtains in the background there. Um, that way it simplifies the light falling onto this little still life that I've arranged here. I've put a dark piece of card behind it and that increases the amount of light that we can see on the flower there and coming through the glass. It's really lovely. I've got a 5x7 canvas board here on my table easel and I've clipped it on on one corner because they often wobble around a little bit, these canvas boards. Um, there's my acrylic paint on a plastic palette and I've got some kitchen roll there to wipe my brush on and a pot of water and I've got a hungry dog there, so I'm going to give him his tea in a minute. And then I've got my spare paints there in case I need any more as I paint and some slow drying medium and my pot of brushes and extra kitchen roll. Okay, let's get going. I'll feed the dog first though. Okay, so what I've done to start with is to mark out the third lines on this surface and where each third crosses is a good place to put the focal point of your painting. It's not too near the centre and it's not too near the edge and it kind of helps to lead the eye into the picture as well if it's slightly offset like this. So here I can put the centre of my flower there and then just looking at this so the top of the little glass could be here and the glass sits on this line, this third line here. I'll make sure I've got the bottom of the glass fitting inside the picture. So that's just a very rough outline, but it just helps me to place these elements of the still life. And the other thing to look at as I do this is the, the negative spaces between these objects. So there's a gap between the flower. I'm just mixing up a brown here. Um, there's a gap between the flower and the glass, which is quite large. And if I so the flower centre is there, and because it's looking that way, if I paint in that space between the flower and the glass, it helps me to position them correctly in relation to each other. So that will do for my first sketch. I'm going to do the rest of the painting in half an hour, and I'm going to just stick to these large brushes. I've got a uh, number 10 bristle brush there and a number 8. They're both about half an inch wide, three quarters of an inch and half an inch. So I'm going to block in the background first. And what I want to do, although I'm on a short time frame here, what I want to do is just spend a few minutes making sure I get the tones right. And I'm going to mix up one or two colours here and put a little bit of the retarder in to keep that wet. And what I can do is mix up the colour and then look at it against the backdrop there and I can see, I don't know whether you can see that, it's, make sure it's the right tone. The tone is more important than colour really for doing this but it is about right with the colour too. 
So I'll put that in the background. And I can see where the dark background cuts in between the petals on this flower. And just block it in. And this very quickly gives you the plan of the painting. It shows you where things need to go. It also shows you in a minute, it gives you something that you can assess and see whether you've got things right or whether things need shifting around a bit. And the back line of the box that this is stood on actually seems to sit on that third that lower third line there so that's useful too and some of this background colour comes into the glass here too it's a bit thin this paint but I can put more on in a minute I also want to block in the, the box colour there is very light it's a very light tonal value there because the light is coming straight through the skylight above I want to warm that slightly you can see what I'm doing here um, just trying to make a warm tone for the lid of the box and again I can hold that up and squint through one eye perhaps you can see that to make sure it's the right sort of tone and colour. Once you've done that if you get those the tonal value and the colour right it makes the painting much easier to do quickly you're not trying to adjust things on the painting then, it just goes in. Now, I want to get some of that box colour up here too, because that's getting picked up on the surface of the water. And getting carried through there, and it's also going through the base of the glass too. And in there. Okay, and I think I'm going to wipe my brush. And I want to mix up some colour for the petals of the flower. So if I hold up just pure white to that flower there, and I'll do it so you can see, it's actually quite, I'll show a bit more, it's actually quite blue. Titanium white is quite a cold white and it looks slightly blue to me in front of this very soft pink, palest pink flower. So I think if I take some white and then take a tiny amount of alizarin crimson just to warm that white slightly and just make sure where that goes. So that can go for the highest tones on these petals. Just stroke them in. I'm trying to use the shape of the brush to kind of twist and get them in the briefest marks possible. I find with flowers that I start to lose it if I have to overwork them, so I try and do them with a minimum amount of labour become rather stodgy otherwise rather than fresh so that's like almost like a base painting for that and then I want to make a slightly deeper tone and I just need to compare this so I'm trying a little bit of a lilac colour make it slightly bluer I think I'm just comparing that to the flower itself and that's just slightly too purple. I'm going to take some of the brown from my background mix and add that to it. That's making it rather softer there, just there. And that's a really, well it's a bit dark but it's certainly getting more in the right area. And then that looks pretty good so we'll try that. 
And that helps to describe the turn of the petals as they turn away from the light. And actually I've got that slightly darker version for where it's darker still. And the bristles of my brush are actually giving me the ridges in these flowers, in these petals too, which is useful. Just I need to slightly deeper version, so I'll take those colours again, alizarin, blue, and then some of this brown. And I'm going to check it because I don't want to go off course with these colours. Check it up against it, that's quite good for the darkest areas again. Just dab them in. back of that petal there, a bit down the edge of this one. And that just helps to get the shape happening a bit. Okay. And then I can put the centre sort of ten minutes into this painting so far. So the centre is yellow, slightly paler yellow than that. so useful. So I'm holding it up and I'm squinting, well I'm closing one eye and I'm looking through the other eye and comparing the colour of the centre of the flower with the colour on the tip of my brush. And it really helps to show you whether you're right or wrong with it. So I can use the corner of this brush just to sort of dab in that yellow. And in the centre it goes green, so I can just pick up a touch of the ultramarine blue. And a bit more yellow. And if I compare that green, and that's pretty good, and just dab that in. I'm going to leave the flower now and let it dry. And I'm using the same brush, just a little bit of a rinse. Dry it off. don't want lots of water on here, I want it to be good solid paint. You get richer colours that way. Right, so I'm going to look into this glass now and see what that needs. So make a little bit more of that background colour because I can see that through the glass. The thing with acrylics, I think they look really good once you start to layer them up. They become much more subtle and interesting. So I think it's quite useful to sort of do things and sort of revisit them and, and add more colour, more layers. I'm using a bit of the slow drying medium that I've got here because it helps to spread the acrylic. When they're pure, they often dry as you're trying to spread them on and it makes your brush stick to the canvas and drag which you know you can use that effect but you don't always want it to do that. So some of the glass is very transparent like here you sort of lose the edge of it. And I can that's actually slightly dark. I've just compared that and it's a little bit dark so lighten it a bit. Even though the backdrop is dark there is some light falling on it, so it's not as dark as you might think. I can just develop this a little bit more now as I revisit it, so I can cover the background better. Put a little bit of retardo in. Don't use too much of that slow drying medium or gel retarder as it's sometimes called because it can actually stop your paint drying altogether it can go very sticky and really you really struggle to get it dry 
I'm squinting at this as I go too because it gives you the overall shape of your composition. When you squint, it takes away the details and the distractions. And you just see the general shapes of things, which is useful. And then there's some dark brown a bits at the bottom here. Glass tends to create strong lights and darks. So it will pick up on the dark bits of background and it's reflecting them around in here. And it seems to concentrate them. So you get strong darks and strong highlights too. Just want to lighten that a little bit. Because there's a kind of it's where the light is falling on the front plane of the glass here is creating this slightly very hard to distinguish Bright colour. It's a com combination of the reflection from the box and the light coming through the window, and it's paler than this. That's annoying. I'll try that. Oh, that's quite useful. That's good. The great thing is with acrylics, if something is wrong, if you discover a mistake or something isn't working, you just go over it, do it again. So there's bits of this elsewhere as well. I'm going to change brushes to this number eight one now because I want to get some light colours on here. Now a quarter of an hour in, so I'm halfway through this now. It's a bit stiff, it's a bit of rinse. I'm drying it off well too. Now there's a bluish grey in the bottom of the glass. It makes a nice complement to all the warm colours that I've got in there at the moment. So I'm going to put some of that in. I'm checking this so that's too bright. I'll put some yellow in too, just to kind of bring it all down. That's quite nice. It's, I think it's the kind of grey sky outside the window reflecting down into the glass. There's some little dimples in this glass as well which are picking up the light in an interesting way. And it's on the rim here too. go darker again. I think I need some deeper bluish kind of browns in there. You have to have the darks really to show up the lights. If you want a dramatic contrast in your painting.
little light and dark marks around the edge of the base of the glass. The paints also start to dry on the palette, which is not very helpful when you want to come back to them. So that slow drying medium is helpful. more light in the water at the top, a bit more dark through the back as well of the glass there. So I need to make something approximate and then Light the tone with the titanium white. It's more like it. it's very light on the top of the water there. reflecting around the rim of the glass too a little bit. Using the big brushes just stops you focusing in like that. It kind of makes you make bigger marks and broader. You just have to kind of suggest things really. It's good practice. Broader marks. Yeah, if I squint, that's about the same tone. It's just slightly lighter on the top of the water, but as the box beneath it. Lumpiness in there. Hmm. It's distracting sometimes, that sort of thing. Okay, let's have a bit more of that down here. I'm going to put the green in next. Watch my brush. It's a nice green, quite a bright green stalk and some little leafy things coming out the back of the flower. That's fairly close to that. And it comes, oh, it looks more yellow on that. It comes into the glass there and gets diffracted and goes across there and there's a few little strands there too and you put the little wispy things in from the back of the flower that also helps the glass to look transparent. I've got five minutes to go so I want to put the very brightest highlights in now where the light, the daylight falls onto the top of the glass. So I want pure titanium white for that. Rest my hand a bit, make sure it's steady. Be 
these little bright touches that catch the eye. It's just pouring all the way through the centre of the glass, especially at the bottom there. a lot of light falling down this side which is kind of warm quite a strong colour that's where the box is reflecting on the edge of the glass I'll put some more light when the water goes across the glass. going to put a few more of the dark browns back into the background. I can kind of clean up those edges a bit. Got three minutes left. Make sure it's properly down on that surface too. Faces balanced. There's lots of dark rings in there too. That's better.
in the edge a little bit. Just a little bit jumpy out there, so I'm just going over it a little bit. And that's it, that's half an hour. So I'll stop there. All done. So I hope that's inspired you to have a go. It only took half an hour, so it's an interesting exercise to try. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.